Hello, my name is Wendy Wyman, and I'm the Director of Programming at Photograph Fusca New York. Founded in 2010 in Stockholm, Photograph Fusca is guided by the principle of inspiring a more conscious world through photography. The museum has built a safe haven of innovation, inclusivity, and self-expression by combining art, culturally eclectic event programming, and a meeting space for dialogue around issues of importance. In recognition of UN Human Rights Day, tonight we are honored to present the 2020 Photography for Humanity Global Prize Competition, an exhibition and conversation presented by Photographiska New York and Photography for Humanity. The installation is now on view at Photographiska's museum in New York through January 24th, 2021. We welcome photographer and president of Photography for Humanity, David Rose, will be in discussion with Photographiska Exhibitions Manager Meredith Breach discussing the finalists of this year's competition and the essential relationship between documentary photography and human rights. A conversation with Laurent Savour, Chief of External Relations, UN Human Rights, and Amanda Hajar, Director of Exhibitions for Photographiska New York, surrounding the, the winning image will be shared during this event. It will be in a video format. The conversation will conclude with questions from viewers watching from home. And we thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy, for that introduction. Sure. Um, and thank you for our audience for joining us today. As she mentioned, there will be a Q&A. So please, if you have questions during this event, um, feel free to submit them and we will get to them towards the end. Um, first off, I would love to invite you, David, to share a little bit about your background with commercial photography and uh, how you got involved with Photography for Humanity. I'm sure. Uh, I started out in, uh, in New York with uh, Annie Leibovitz. I was her first assistant and um, just really fell in love with portraiture and, and that whole world. And um, I went on to do a lot of photography myself with Vanity Fair magazine and Sony Pictures and that kind of thing. And uh, during that uh, time period, uh, David Clark, who created the uh, four triple six four African AIDS initiatives, uh, contacted me about doing a portrait of uh, uh, Nelson Mandela in, in South Africa. Uh, and so while I was there, um, I was sitting in the hall with all of these world leaders that were lined up in the hall for their 10 minutes with, with President Mandela. And he was giving them mandates of like, okay, now go home and do this. And, and when I left, I was just so struck by that. Um, and about like, well, what can I do with photography to make, you know, uh, to really affect people's lives? And so I joined, joined forces with David Clark uh, cause and I help, uh, you know, use my production skills to, um, you know, to help create and produce cause related events. Um, and in the course of that time, we were working with United Nations uh, Human Rights and we started talking about how we could really bring photography in and, and um, also just the shrinking market for photojournalism that's out there in, in the print world. And so we decided to come up with an idea that we could expand um, that through uh, online uh, photography. And we decided to do this photo competition and not have an entry fee. So that way uh, it was open to amateurs as well as professionals. And it, um, it, it kind of opened up that whole feel for, for uh, people to share those images and comment and, and get involved. So I, I you know, just, just created this new, new um, uh, outlet for those photos. Oh, that's wonderful. I love how you said it's, it's for amateurs and professionals alike, just completely open to anyone to submit their images. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, you know, and, and it's just also, you know, through our Instagram feed, um, you, you know, you get exposed to these images um, throughout the year. So it's not just a, you know, one off. And so you do get to see uh, a, a wide array. Um, unfortunately, we, we only get to, you know, show a, a dozen of them here. And, and these are all last year's finalists that are up behind me. Um, and uh, it, it's just really a fun process throughout the year. And it, really interesting to highlighting the different events that are, you know, they're going on around the world. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. So I think to begin, um, let's show the winner from last year, Samira Aldini's image.
So this is by photographer Samira Aldumi. The caption says, a married couple drinks coffee in the remains of their home in Duma. It was taken in Syria. Yeah, this photo really stood out to us uh, when, we, when we saw it last year, just this calm moment in this, you know, in this crazy war zone um, where, you know, their house has been destroyed and they're just having this quiet moment having tea. Uh, and it's just um, very impactful about how life goes on, you know, if you're lucky in, in, in these kind of environments and, and how just the, um, the human will, will, you know, will persevere. Yes, it's incredible how you can see the destruction of the city to the left and then just this sort of open space to the right. And like you said, this moment of peace that they're having. We also have a video by this artist that we get to share as well. It has been almost nine years since the beginning of the Syrian peaceful uprising, which turned into a war that rocked the whole country, <coughs> causing the death of hundreds of thousands of civilians and displacing millions due to their bold actions by the Syrian government forces. In my winning photo for the last year's award, we can see the brave woman of Muhammad as she drinks coffee with her injured husband at their destroyed home in the city of Duma. Muhammad is originally from Aleppo, northern Syria, but she's lived with her husband in Duma for 30 years. Their children still live in Aleppo, and due to the siege that has been imposed by the Syrian government, on the area of Eastern Ghouta, Muhammad couldn't see her children. After almost five years, Muhammad managed to reunite with her children, but that was after paying a high price by being forced to abandon her home in Duma and leave during the Russian Syrian forced displacement campaign at the beginning of 2018. People of Ghouta were forced to flee their homes, leaving everything behind after the Syrian and Russian forces have probably bombed the area. It's been almost three years since I had to leave Syria by taking such a dangerous way, risking it all to arrive in Turkey at first. Two years ago, I arrived in France as a refugee. Being chosen as the spirit of 2019 Photography for Humanity Award was a great help for me. It gave me the opportunity to continue my work in the field that I truly love and believe in its importance. Almost two months ago, I finished my documentary project on migrants crossing the English Channel to Britain. This subject has touched me a lot, as I myself have experienced some of the suffering of those people, especially after spending almost a month with migrants and refugees who took shelter in, this, in, in some tiny tents in the scary forest of Calais. I believe in photography as a way to achieve change and justice, and I also believe that everyone has a role in life. And my role as a photographer is to tell the story of those vulnerable people so the whole world can see it clearly. And I hope that people in charge would do their role so this tragedy would come to an end. Thank you. Thank you to Samir Aldumi for submitting that video and for this powerful work. Okay, so now I think we can go on to this year's uh, top 10 finalists. We have 10 finalists to share. And um, David, do you want to speak a little bit about the breadth of work that we received this year? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a very unusual year in the world of uh, human rights because, you know, in our lifetimes, we've never had such an overwhelming um, issue affect the entire globe as the COVID pan pandemic has. Um, there's still all these other things that happened like Black Lives Matter and just you know, poverty and LGBT. Uh, so it was, it was a, a, a stunning array of pho photography that came out this year. And, and as you'll see, as we go through the finalists, um, it, uh, it, there's, you know, just a quite a, quite a few parts of the world represented as, as well as styles. And, uh, um, and I did want to say that like the, these photos came from 142 uh, nations, um, you know, for our contest this year. Um, it was, uh, and it was very, very difficult to narrow it down to these. Absolutely. Um, so the first finalist, we have that image up. So this work is entitled Heroes 3 by Emeke Obanor from Bayou, Nigeria. It was taken January of this year. 
Yeah, um, this was from a series of photography uh, or photos that he did um, highlighting women's access to education. And what I found so striking about this body of work is that by not showing their faces, they became every woman as they strive to better their lives through education. Um, they were um, uh, they were all very different, but all took uh, place in these, these classrooms. And, and I just, it was just such a stunning series. And I was sad that we could only show the one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And this image is of a girl who's 16 years old. Her name is Lottie. Um, she was actually abducted by Boko Haram um, and managed to survive um, two forced marriages and a bombing. So this photo is really a striking image of hope and her looking forward and and really being dedicated to her studies and, and staying focused there. It's been incredibly resilient. Yeah, and the one thing I really uh, also liked about this uh, story behind this one is, um, you know, by surviving the suicide bomb that she was had strapped to her body and, um, and now studying um, and to get her education and she wants to be a, a journalist and she says yeah. that the pen is mightier than the sword. Yeah, incredible. Okay, our next um, top 10 finalist. This image is called Hope to Get Well. It's by Arya Basuki from Tangerang, Indonesia, and it was taken September of 2019. Yeah, and, uh, this image is an a Islamic boarding school for narcotic rehabilitation. And just this, you know, the stark, cold, narrow, blank space of a cell, you know, he's focused on the one point of hope. It's just these rays of light coming in through the window. Uh, and it just, I, I think that you really feel just that cold, cold environment that he's in and, and, and what he's going through. So I just thought it was very, very powerful. Absolutely, yeah. We actually have a video to share um, by the photographer Ari Basuki as well. What I want to convey from my photo is even though they had to lose a part of their teenage life because of drug and narcotic. As a human being, they still have a hope and chance to cure and live a better life. As a photographer, I want to show to the world how drugs and narcotics hide win their teenage life and their future. And my visualization of undergoing rehabilitation in this photo, that they have to be in a small cell, is to avoid the aggressive behavior. This teenage photo shows us the reality of an iceberg phenomena. There are many children in this world lose affection from their parents and drain into drugs and narcotics, so they cannot enjoy their full of dynamic youth of their right had to be taken by cause of drug and narcotic, such as their social right, including their right to be with their family, the right to get the proper education and proper living, and also the right for their acquisition. They had a limitation of land and funds to build a larger and more appropriate place. Thank you to Ari Basuki for that um, video. So as he mentioned, that um, man pictured is actually a teenager. He's 16 years old, like the girl in the previous photo as well. For our next image, This is entitled COVID-19 Funeral by Totok Wayanato. It's um, taken in Jakarta, Indonesia, July of 2020. Yeah, this, this photo I, I found uh, extremely stunning. Um, it's just like a film noir scene, you know, from a movie uh, with just someone being buried in the dark of night and with the rows of all the, the basic headstones lit only by the headlights. And, you know, it was so eerie and, and haunting, and I think it really fully captures, you know, the nightmare, um, and you know, of the darkness of, of this pandemic. Absolutely, it's 
It's such a striking image. I think the night scene and the fact that these workers are working late into the evening, it's like a round the clock response. And it's just grief 100% of the way through. Yeah, and this was, you know, one of many photos we had from around the globe of, of you know, burials, you know, the COVID burials with, you know, aerial photos of just rows and rows and rows of, of graves. And um, it was just heartbreaking to see see all that this year. Um, but I felt this photo really, uh, ca you know, captured uh, the true, true essence of that. So our next top 10 finalist, this is an image called Life Force, What Love Can Save by Constanza Portnoy. It was taken in Buenos Aires, Aires, Argentina in August of 2020. Yeah, this one, I, I, I really love just the radiant look on, on Jorge's face. And, you know, it just captures, you know, one's ability to overcome challenges in life. And, and, and just, you know, just to see that, that joy uh, radiating from him. And, you know, just to be able to celebrate life, you know, filled with love, joy, and hope. And, and, and just, it really is just a happy moment in this life. Yeah, this image is so, so joyful. And um, that's his daughter. So you really just see the bond between the two of them and they're playing and there's just this ray of light too on the side that's like coming straight from her. It's beautiful. Yeah. We also have an image that was submitted by Constanza Portnoy to accompany this photo. Hi, let me introduce myself. My name is Constanza Pornoy. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina, in South America. I am a psychologist and a documentary photographer. Well, I am deeply grateful for this award, so thank you very much. Um, my photographic essay witnesses the family life whose members are physically disabled and they have to overcome an um, adverse social status um, even in times of COVID-19 pandemic. So for that reason, my image um, seeks to highlight the force of life, um, the resilience, the bonus love that can be built day by day in the face of total indifference of the so-called normal society and an Argentine state that condemns and abandons people with disability to exclusion and marginalization. Thank you to Constanza Portnoy for that video. We have our next top 10 finalist. This image is an evolution of species by Luis Teixeira Mendez from Copacabana, Rio de Janeiro, March, 2020. Yeah, this, this photo I found very striking, just the irony of uh, this homeless person sleeping under you know, a mural depicting the evolution of man. And you know, it's like how far we've come and and yet, at the same time, not so far. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the inequality uh, that that so many people and you know experience on the streets, or just all the way around the globe. Right. It's like, what is progress worth if we're not taking care of one another? Yeah. Um, we do have a video by this artist as well. My name is Luis Teixeira. I am a Brazilian photographer fascinated by street photography and its social aspects. Due to the pandemic, I restricted my photographic range by half a mile from home, and I'm going by bike. Little by little, I realized that extreme poverty is growing relentlessly, thus increasing homeless people. They don't like to be photographed because they fear being removed from the streets, but with a little affection, some allow it. I think my role as a photographer is to make them visible. It's impressive how much of the population is not sensitized when faced with the subhuman conditions in which homeless people live. It's like they are invisible. 
In this small square live about 15 homeless people. And this is where the story of the photo, the evolution of the species, begins. As in fact the evolution of species occurred in the history of humanity, I would like the image to inspire people and rulers to position themselves more effectively for human rights, applying a greater sense of organization and cooperation with our species. Brazil has become a country that does not care about education, health and the environment. Thank you to Luis Teixeiras Mendez for sharing that. Um, we have our next top 10 finalist. This image is entitled Conflict of Cultures by Huidson Alves. Uh, it was taken in Roraima, Brazil in July of 2020. Yeah, and this, uh, this one was from the same country as the previous photo, which is really, it kind of shows you the, the uh, variety of Brazil from, from uh, Rio de Janeiro to the Amazon. Um, I think what the, the jury found so, you know, so fascinating about this image is it brings home you know, just how far the reach of this uh, COVID pandemic has been and you know, extends even to the, you know, some of the most remote corners of our planet. And, um, and also just this perspective of looking through the grass and you get this glimpse of, of another world of these, these Yanomami tribal um, people just trying to figure out what to do with this mask. And then the other thing that, you know, that struck me was they have all these piercings and you know, how, like, how did you even get this mask to work with that? Um, it was uh, just, you know, uh, you're just in this corner of, you know, of the world where it's just paradise and yet the pandemic follows you even there. Right. And um, I read as well that it was the Brazilian uh, military brought them the masks and supplies, but the conflict there is that they were also the ones bringing the potential threat of COVID. Yeah, so it's it was a catch-22 for sure. Um, I think that it went up the river with traders to start, and then the military mm -hmm. was trying to prevent further spread, but at the same time, they're carriers as well. Right. So our next top 10 finalist. This image is entitled Faith by Sarar Hussein Apo. It was taken in Mawa, Bangladesh, May of 2020. Yeah, you know this this photo is, is so striking because you know you see this the struggle of this mother, you know, trying to lower the temperature of her child uh, while another family member prays over them, and uh, it just you know the despair and loneliness of of the world out there uh, where a lot of these people don't have access to you know uh, modern technology and 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 great care in hospitals, and they're just kind of left on their own. Yeah, it's such a beautiful image, just the closeness of family having to work together in the face of this um, threat and just a mother caring for her children. Yeah, and the quality of the photo with just, you know, the beautiful lighting and the colors, and, uh, it was quite stunning. Yes. Hi, my name is Sarah Rusen Opu from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Professionally, I am a textile engineer. I started my photography journey back in 2015. Documentary photography is my strong suit. My ongoing long-term documentary project on climate change under the title Waiting for the Last Wave. The photo title Faith tells a story of refusal. The girl who lives with her family in the building next to mine 
caught a fever during COVID-19 lockdown in Bangladesh. Just as the news of her illness spread, all other family members living in that building went away suspecting her to be a COVID-19 patient. Unfortunately, even all the hospital and clinic refused to take her in. I went to give them a helping hand and tried to assist them as much as I could with food, medicine and daily necessities. From there I caught this moment when this girl mother was putting water on her head to lower the temperature and her elder sister besides her visiting from the Holy Quran asking for aid from the Almighty. No one was even sure if she was infected with coronavirus or not, yet they abandoned this building immediately without any hesitation. I was asking myself, all this lesson about empathy and compassion in the textbook are actually useless. Nowadays we see a lot of human around us but without humanity. Please, let's try to grow and spread the humanity with the human around the world. Please. Thank you. Thank you to Shawar Hussein Apo for submitting that video to go along with his image, Faith. Um, for our next submission, we'll put that up now. So this image is entitled Their Home by Mohammed Shah Jahan um, from Chittagong, Bangladesh. It was taken April of 2020. Yeah, uh, this year we had um, so many entries that are really addressing child labor and, um, and you know, just children teaching other children how to write and read by, you know, with just with chalk on a sidewalk. And, um, but this one really stood out It's just um, these children that, that live in the train station and they survive on what little they can, uh, you know, uh, what they can earn from, you know, passengers, um, giving them tips for carrying their bags. Uh, and you just really see, yeah, the direness of their lives. And, um, and I, I, you know, the girl just curled up there with her, her little doll and, their, their, their puppy asleep and, and um, it just uh, it was really heartbreaking and, um, and at the same time with just the, that moment with the trains you know pulling out of the station like that while they're asleep just quite spectacular yeah just the resting um, children in face of these moving trains just the two of those things together you can just almost hear the noise um, in looking at this image our next top 10 finalists, we have the image up. This image is entitled Protest Embrace by Louis Mack, um, based in Paris, France, and it was taken June of 2020. Yeah, in, in this photo, I, you know, it's just it's one of those uh, incredible moments uh, that that were captured around the globe for the um, Black Lives Matter uh, protests. And uh, this one was in Paris. And, um, you know, as the militarized police just, you know, swooped down on this couple, you know, you can see the, the terror in her eyes. And, you know, their only recourse was to embrace. Yeah, you see this really human moment in the face of, of an enormous threat and just the stoicism too on the officers' faces is just striking. Yeah, it's 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 sometimes it's hard to to bear witness uh, when you see just so much force against a peaceful protest. And... Yeah, which we saw so much this year. Um, we do have a video that Louis has submitted, so we'll go to that now. Hello, I'm Louis Mack and I'm a 20 year old photography student from Scotland. I've lived in Switzerland and Saudi Arabia. I currently study at the Spears Photographic Institute in Paris, France. Following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis in May earlier this year, street protests took place worldwide. I attended a few of these to document what was going on. 
my photo, which was picked as a finalist for the Photography for Humanity competition, was taken at the Champ de Mars in Paris, France. In the hours leading up to this, what had been a peaceful, good-natured protest became increasingly intense. The tactics of the riot police were to seal off the square and isolate the protesters. They then slowly, steadily encircled the protesters in an ever-decreasing space. As the circle got smaller, the tension rose. People all around reacted in a number of ways. Mostly, people became agitated and there was a lot of jostling and running around and shouting. As the riot police closed in, they started to charge at the protesters to get a response. There was general real fear among the protesters, most of whom were preparing to defend themselves. Right in front of me, and in total contrast to everyone else's reaction, a young couple's fear-driven response to the intimidation was to embrace. Their instinctive, non-threatening gesture was one that everybody can relate to. With the young couple's actions winning the moral argument, the look of fear on the young girl's face becomes even more relatable for the viewer. Thank you to Louis Mack for sharing that video. We have our last top 10 finalist. So this image is entitled Freedom in Freedom. It's by photographer Mariam Madge from Tehran, Iran. It was taken October of 2019. Yeah, this, this one really um, grabbed the jury, I think, just because of the exuberance and energy of these Iranian women as they celebrate you know, being able to attend a men's soccer match for the first time in decades. And the photographer's story was also uh, very, very compelling, um, as you'll see in the video following this. Uh, you know, she was incarcerated um, uh, earlier for photographing at men's soccer matches. Uh, and the, uh, just the outrage of her incarceration um, put a lot of pressure on FIFA uh, to, uh, to ban Iran from the World Cup if they didn't allow women to attend the soccer matches. So uh, she really, uh, she put her life on the line um, to make a difference in her country for, for the women around her. It's such an incredible photograph. I mean, just the joy and excitement on their faces. I mean, it's so much more than just a football game, right? You can just oh, really yeah. like sense how much this meant, how electric this moment was. So incredible. Yeah, it wasn't just their favorite team. Yeah, you know, they were just, you know, amazed to be there, you know, with their, with their, you know, the fellow women of Iran. Absolutely. Um, we do have a video. Um, on behalf of this artist that was also submitted. My name is Moya Dodd and I'm pleased to introduce the work of Mariam Madge. Mariam's work addresses the most human of desires for women in her region and that is the urge to respond to that great convening power called sport. Mariam has brought us images of women in Afghanistan, in Iran and elsewhere who are gleefully participating in their sport, having fought tenaciously to overcome all kinds of challenges, from the tyranny of low expectations through to the humiliation of outright exclusion. Uh, like the Iranian women, who couldn't enter their own stadiums to watch the world's most popular sport, football, who were beaten and arrested for the crime of being in a football stadium while female. So when they finally entered to watch their team in a qualifier in 2019, Mariam was there to capture the occasion and to bring those images to the world. On the flip side, she's also brought images of world sport to Iran. Uh, I was privileged to meet her at the 2019 Women's World Cup final in France. And one of the images she took that day of the US star Alex Morgan uh, graced the front pages of the leading sports newspaper in Tehran the next day, um, crossing the cultural and political advi uh, divide to show a top sportswoman who was doing her thing on the biggest stage and rising to the big occasion. So whether it's bringing the world to her region or bringing her region to the world with joyful images of uh, women participating, with images of struggle, uh, with images of triumph, ultimately, just to be there in the moment, in their sport. Um, Mariam's pictures, I think, inspire us all to believe that, um, that these battles can be won. Thank you, Mariam. 
Thank you to Moya Dodd for that video and the photographer Miriam Madge. Now I am pleased to introduce um, Laurence Savor, Chief of External Relations, UN Human Rights, and Amanda Hajar, Director of Exhibitions here at Fotografiska. They're gonna be in conversation regarding the Global Prize recipient this year. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Hajar, Director of Exhibitions at Fotografiska New York. And here today with me is Laurent Savor. He is the Chief of External Relations at the UN Human Rights. Hi, Laurent, how are you? Hi, Amanda. Yeah, very nice to be here with you today on this very special day. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to start, if you could just give us a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Well, thank you. And uh, it, it's, like I said, a great pleasure to be here on this special day, Human Rights Day, 10 December, which marks the anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the UN General Assembly in 1948 on the ashes of uh, World War II. It was in Paris, actually, on Place Trocadéro. And as you can tell by my accent, I, I know well the place. Um, I'm uh, the Chief of External Relations at the UN Human Rights Office. We're based uh, in Geneva, uh, Switzerland. And, uh, the UN Human Rights Office is the lead agency, UN agency, to promote and defend human rights for, for all everywhere. And we are thrilled to be a, a partner, a global partner of uh, Photography for Humanity, the global initiative that uh, David Clark Rosa created uh, uh, last year. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be, to be here and associated with that, knowing that for us, photography is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful medium to convey the story of human rights. And uh, as we say in French, um, you know, uh, a photo is often worth uh, more than a thousand words. So really, really great to be here with you. And uh, thank you, Photographiska, for, for joining the partnership this year. Well, we also wanted to thank the David Clark cause for having us host this installation on our sixth floor of the museum. Um, you know, the, the competition was wildly successful and I did want to just give a few um, sort of stats on where we came about with this exhibition and what the results were. Um, we got over 7,000 submissions from 142 countries, which is truly amazing. Um, alongside of me, there were seven other judges, which I just briefly want to mention and acknowledge because they all are highly accomplished and put a lot of time and effort into judging the photographs. Um, Kristen Ashburn, who's an American photojournalist, she's the winner of the NPPA's Best of Photojournalism Award, and she also has two World Press Photo Prizes. Elizabeth Biondi, the former visuals editor, at the New Yorker, an independent curator, writer, and teacher. Robert Clark, who's a freelance photographer, um, whose work has appear, appeared in many publications and organizations, including the National Geographic. Um, he has an award-winning novel called Friday Night Lights. And Ruth Eichhorn, the former director of photography and editor-at-large at Geo Magazine, which is headquartered in Hamburg. Michael Itzkoff, artist and co-founder of Fable and Daylight Books. His words have appeared in the New York Times Lens blog, Art Asia Pacific, Nueva Luz, Conscientious Blog, and The Forward, among others. Robert Pledge, who's the co-founder of International International Independent Picture Agency, Contact Press Images in New York. He also served as the editor of French visual arts magazine, Zoom, and director of the New York Office of Photography Agency, Gamma. And finally, of course, we have David Rose, who's, the photogra who's a photographer, producer, and president of Photography for Humanity. So I wanna thank all of these judges for being a part of this wonderful global competition. Um, alongside of me. And I also want to highlight that with these submissions, all of these photographs explored such a variety of issues. Um, everything from COVID to climate change, Black Lives Matter, racial injustice, gender equality, and many, many more issues. Um, so it, it was really a huge variety that we got from all the submissions. No, it's the, the figures are impressive and uh, and the, the, 
the panel uh, of judges is also very impressive. So now I, I think, you know, everybody is uh, waiting to hear who's the winner. So uh, who's the winner? <laughs> <laughs> so we're very pleased to announce, to announce that Anandito Mukherjee is the winner with his image that's called The Last Rites. This was taken in New Delhi, India in May of 2020. And I wanna read a quote from Mukherjee about the image and how he sort of explained what's happening here. Those who lost their lives to coronavirus were not allowed to have a final goodbye from their loved ones and were buried by contracted municipal workers. As the death toll continues to rise on a daily basis, the capital's limited number of burial sites are becoming increasingly overwhelmed by victims of the disease, with bodies typically arriving in multiple numbers. There is added challenge as grave diggers, contractual laborers, and ambulance drivers must work in extreme heat while wearing personal protective equipment. Even more difficult is the seemingly endless grief, helplessness, and desperation of the victims' families. It's common to see the indignity of bulldozers digging a grave at the same time the family, which is forced to stand far apart from the burial site, is performing customary rituals, including a final prayer. Yeah, I must say this is a, a very, very strong uh, image. I mean, for, for, for me, it's... Um, it's a strong, a stark reminder of what we've been going through all, all throughout 2020 and what we're still, unfortunately, very unfortunately, going through. Um, it, it is, you know, worth uh, emphasizing that uh, often the people who are the most affected by uh, COVID-19 uh, are those who have uh, their rights denied or are not enjoying the, the full breadth of um, human rights whether it's the elderly, whether it's people living with disability, people who are living on, on the street. And I think, you know, moving forward, this is why the United Nations is calling for something we call a new social contract, uh, which is, you know, a world where human rights and respect for human rights is at the core of the, the recovery. Um, and I think, you know, we talk a lot about vaccine at the moment, and uh, we, we often say on our side that, uh, Respect for human rights is um, a vaccine, one that actually builds a more compassionate, more just, more fair societies. And we hope that the world will uh, come together faced with this uh, pandemic. Um, but, but thank you, uh, Amanda, and again, to all the judges who um, you know, participated uh, in this initiative. I also want to, to thank all the photographers um, who really submitted you know, great work from all over the world, as you say, I think more than 140 uh, countries. And um, I certainly look forward to uh, seeing in person, I wished, um, the uh, exhibition. But thank you very much again for being such a great partner and uh, very happy to, um, to, to, to see this uh, exhibition through. We definitely want to offer our congratulations to Anandito Mukherjee, who was the winner this year. So congratulations to him. And of course, we want to acknowledge the other finalists and honorable mentions that all submitted wonderful photography, very emotional and impactful um, during this very tough year that we've had. Um, Laurent, thank you so much for being here with us. We really appreciate your voice and you lending your time to this project. Um, and finally, I want to kick it back over to David and Meredith, who are going to be sharing a video from the winning photographer. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you to Amanda and Laurent for that lovely talk. And um, we do have a video from the artist that we can share now. Hi, this is Anindita Mukherjee. I'm an independent photographer based in New Delhi, India. I'm thankful for this award and uh, humbled that Photography for Humanity chose my work. Uh, this entire experience has been a big confidence booster and has demonstrated to me how fulfilling it can be to use my craft to tell stories of unsung heroes and their uh, true selfless acts. Uh, this uh, award uh, 
gives me a global platform and that uh, in turn will uh, help me do more such stories in the future. As a photographer, I feel I am a visual witness to the events uh, recorded in history and uh, this global pandemic has given the entire humanity a lot of challenges and small deeds by these corona warriors are uh, usually these these deeds usually go unnoticed and uh, i feel their uh, their struggles and their uh, contribution should be documented and uh, be told to the world uh, photography for me is uh, a way to express my feelings and uh, I feel that uh, as a photographer, it is my duty to bring out uh, such instances to the world. Thank you again to Anandito Mukherjee for both his striking image and also that video. Yeah, I wanted to say, you know, a big thank you to, um, you know, Wendy, Amanda and Meredith at Fotografiska and to our, our jury. Um, UN Human Rights, uh, the people at, at, at David Clark Cause, uh, especially Alex Buffer, who spent endless hours sorting and uh, uh, and organizing these photos in a way that we, that were manageable for our jury. So I just want to say a thank you to everyone and also the photographers from around the world that participated. Yes, and before we leave, I actually do have a couple questions from the audience. Um, so the first one is how many submissions were there? Uh, we had over 7,000 submissions this year, um, which, you know, was, was nice, uh, you know, considering it was our second year of doing this. So uh, it was yeah. you know, finally starting to spread and uh, spread the word and let's get more people from around the world participating in this. Um, you know, follow us on our Instagram feed and uh, yeah, photography for humanity. And uh, yeah. Great. Yeah, 7,000, that's amazing. Um, also, a couple of people wanted to know what kind of criteria is used to narrow down the images to the top 10 and then the winner? Um, is it based more on the emotion that you feel looking at the image or is there set criteria? Uh, it's, it's really a balance. Um, you, you know, one, does it apply to human rights? And, uh, and two, what is the emotional impact and also the uniqueness of the image? You know, if it's an image that we've seen, you know, a hundred times through, through the years, um, you know, it doesn't tend to climb, climb up the charts. Uh, so I think the uh, uniqueness as well as uh, emotional impact are the, the most important factors. All right. I think that concludes our evening. Um, Thank you again to the participating photographers, to Amanda and Laurent. Um, thank you to you, David, for being in conversation with me tonight. It was such a pleasure to speak with you about all of these incredible photographs. Well, yeah, thank you everyone. And uh, we hope to see you again back here next year. Yes, yeah, so this exhibition will be on view in our sixth floor at Fotografiska until January 24th. So please come by and see it. Thanks, have a good night.